What's poppin' people? My name's Haligonian, and today I'm gonna be showing off my new plugin, Color Shift. So, let's jump right into an example. So I have this shot here. I think it would look cool if we gave it a new color palette using Color Shift, so let's give it a shot. In the effect control panel, I'm gonna right click and go Haligonian Color Shift. And immediately you can see the default settings look pretty cool, but I kinda wanna give it like a thermal camera type look. So I'm gonna hop into the colors group here and I'm gonna pick some colors, sort of like a rainbow. We'll go Roy Gabiv. Roy Gabiv on him. Maybe skip yellow. Get a little blue. Some indigo. That's looking pretty cool already. We can adjust the input range offset to sort of shift the colors around. I also want to try adding some exposure before the effect and see what that might look like. So if we add some exposure. Yeah, so I don't like how all of this is red. I kind of want this part to be blue. So I guess I could just flip the input range here and maybe adjust the exposure again. Pull out a little bit of those highlights. Maybe change the input range offset so we get a little bit more detail in that blue section. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Get a little bit less exposure. Let me explain what's going on here. So here in input range, you pick one of all these values. So for each pixel, you can represent its color as a number of different values. You could look at its intensity, you could look at its red channel, you could look at its green channel, you could look at the lowest channel out of red, green, and blue. You can look at the CMYK and then the minimum and maximum of that. So we pick one of these and that is the input range. And then we set this gradient. And so for each pixel, depending on where it is on the input range, it will become the color on the gradient over here. So for intensity, any color that's as dark as a pixel could be, which would be pure black, it will get this blue color. And for any color that's as light as a pixel can be, it'll get this purple color here. And you can shift around the input range and you can see it updates on the graphic there. You can even flip it. And then we can just click and drag these colors to move them around as well. We can add as many colors as we want by clicking plus here and then you can delete them by clicking minus. So I hope that part makes sense. Now I wanna explain what happens when you have pixel values over one. So if your composition is in 32 bits per channel, as mine is here, then it's possible to have pixel values that are greater than one. So if we disable color shift, go up into the info panel, you can see because of this exposure we have, some of these pixels, if you look up here in the info panel, some of these pixels have values over one, some even as high as two. So what is color shift to do? Because this gradient here goes from a zero value all the way to one. What if there's a value of two? Well this parameter determines what happens, basically. So if you set it to clamp, then any values over one just become one. So as we increase the exposure, you'll see everything slowly just become red because all the values are becoming greater than one and then they're being clamped down to one. If we set it to wrap back to zero, then it looks a little intense when the uh, values are very high, but if we have more reasonable values, it can look pretty cool. For an example, if you had a value of 1.3, it becomes 0.3. If you had a value of 2.5, it becomes 0.5. So it'll just subtract one from the value until it's within the range, basically. Then the last values over one option is bounce. And so that'll, for whatever amount it goes over one, it'll bounce back. And then if it goes below zero, it'll bounce back from there. So if you have a value of 1.3, it'll become 0 0.7. If you have a value of 2.3, it will bounce all the way down to here and then bounce back so it'll become 0 0.3. Any values that hit one will just bounce back and you can see they go down through green and blue. And then once they hit purple, they'll bounce back up and keep going back the other way. So that's what happens with values over one. I'm gonna hop into another example now. And we're gonna try making some animated text. So. Let's write out color shift here, go into the align panel to center it, and then I'll disable the transparency grid. And now I want to animate this to fade in letter by letter. So 
drop down, go opacity, set it to zero, and then we're going to keyframe the start value from zero to 100. Now you can see every letter fades in one by one, which okay, looks pretty cool. But if we apply color shift and then set the input range to alpha, which means transparency, so now as pixels go from fully visible to not visible, they will change from this color to this color gradually. And so I think it looks a little much with all these colors, but maybe we can put three colors and make the first two colors pretty similar. Make this one also a pinkish color. Now you can see as they fade in, they start off as pink and then turn blue. Now this will keep the same transparency values as the original pixels, so they're still fading in. If you wanted to change that a bit, you can apply levels after the effect and then change the alpha and then you can kind of clamp the values a little bit. You don't want to do this too much because it can alter the anti-aliasing around the text, but that'll make it kind of, they jump in and they're not transparent for as long. So I think that looks pretty neat. Maybe even make the pink value here last a little bit longer and be a little bit redder and lighter. Yeah, looks pretty cool to me. So the last example I want to show you is with this clip of some people surfing. So it looks pretty neat, but I think it would look neater if we added color shift. So let's add Haligonian color shift. And then to add some colors, I've gone to this site Color Hunt, which has a bunch of color palettes I've sorted by most popular of all time. And I found this one that I like here and I'll just open it up. And what we can do is go into the colors group here and copy these one by one by clicking here, opening this, and then just Command V to paste. And then I'll add these one by one. And then since there's only four, I'll delete this last color by highlighting it and then pressing the delete button. I actually think this pink looks pretty cool, so I'm just gonna keep that there. Now, I think it looks pretty cool already, but I wanna try some different input range options. We can see what intensity looks like, maybe black. I think that looks pretty neat. And this gives me a chance to talk about some other aspects of color shift. So you also have a cycle scale here and you can tell what's happening here by looking at, this is the effective gradient, right? So this is the gradient where you can drag the handles but this is actually what's being output. And so usually it's the same, right? It, it corresponds with this. But if you apply cycle scale, you see that it actually squishes or stretches the gradient. And this can be especially cool for animations if you want to set keyframes with this value. Now you can see a problem arises here where if you see here, the value goes from the bottom value of pink to the top value of teal or whatever that is very sharply and you can see the problem on the image here it's it's very harsh so i have this parameter called smooth wrap and if we check that it just smoothens it out just a little bit it doesn't completely fix the problem but you can see what it's doing here it's basically adding that ending effect to the very end here and then it transitions between them a little bit just so it has a chance to not look quite so harsh if you wanted you could also just do this by hand so if we disable smooth wrap we could add a color at the end here and make it the same as the starting color if I copy and paste that. And now we can make it even a little bit more extreme. So that looks pretty good there, but I'm happy with the way it looked before, just using smooth wrap. We have another parameter here called discrete color transitions. So it'll make more sense if we set the cycle scale back to one. Basically just makes every color go immediately into the next color. It smooths it a little bit so it doesn't look so harsh but that can be cool for certain effects. In this case, I don't think it's the move, but it can be cool for motion graphics and stuff like that. And then you have a blend with original slider, composite over original, which I'll show you in a second, because there's one whole aspect of this plugin that I haven't gotten into yet, which is the alpha handle. So every color here also has a corresponding alpha value. So you can change the color position and then change the color, but you can also change the alpha value for there. So if we lower this, now you can see this region of the gradient is fully transparent. So we have the transparency grid on and after effects. If we turn it off, you'll see the background color. But 
you can see through this section, and that's where the composite over original checkbox comes in. Now every section of the image where you can see through, you can actually have the original image below it. So if you wanted to see through it in certain aspects, down into the original image, maybe we want to see the waves as they originally were, and then adjust everything else. I think that looks pretty neat. And then you also are able to unlock the alpha handles from the color handles. So if we uncheck this here, now we can move the alpha handles freely, separately from the color handles. They can be in separate positions. You can add more or remove them in independently of the color handles. And then as soon as you hit lock alpha handles, they'll all lock back into place. So that's all for this overview of Haligonian color shift. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, you can feel free to comment down below or open a support ticket on AE Scripts. The quickest way to reach me is actually by joining our Discord. The link is on the AE Scripts sales page. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do. Thank you.